Reverend. Welcome again, dear friends, to another edition of Fresh Bread. This is Reverend Phil Anderson here, pastor of Oakland United Methodist Church and Kansas Avenue United Methodist Church here in the capital city of Topeka, Kansas. Hope you're having a good day. We're starting out on a new week this week, and today is Monday. January 23rd of 2023. So again, we're happy you could be with us again. We hope that you are listening to these. Of course, if you're hearing me talking, I guess you are listening. But more than that, we hope you're letting other people know that we are doing fresh bread again. You know, it is kind of a time intensive effort. It does take a little bit of time. I mean, five minutes uh, per recording and then we have to download it and send it over and it, you know for each one it's probably 10 minutes so it's about an hour's time not a lot of time but I'll tell you what it's just been an incredibly busy few weeks here and it looks like it's going to continue to be very very busy so again uh, if this is worthwhile if this is worth our time we'll keep doing it if if we uh if it's not obviously uh, we'll move on and do something else we've uh, kind of taken a little bit of a break here the last few months we restarted these first of this month first of the year actually january 2023 and so again if you're listening to these let me know just when you see me holler at me and say hey i'm listening to these we are listening it's worth your effort uh, otherwise you know we're going to go ahead and try to spend our time as efficiently as we can and so uh, last week we talked a lot about things going on in the church we're not going to do that this week we're going to look into the book of james as i I told you it's a good five chapter book it's really a very pithy book it's, it just tells it like it is you know and i want to say this as we start first of all to just make sure we all are on the same page jesus christ came into our world because he loved us and he he wanted a relationship with us he knew we could not be good enough on our own so therefore he knew he had to come into our world and to be a sacrifice to reconcile us to God. Why did we need reconciliation to God? Well, simply put, our sins had separated us from God. Now, throughout the Old Testament, you'll read about a lot of sacrifices that were made, and they were very temporary. They were made on a regular basis during certain holy times of the year. But as soon as that sacrifice was made to show uh, sorrow for sins and to atone for those sins, all of a sudden, you know, we were right back into our sinful ways and our sinful nature. And again, we needed to do this sacrifice all over again so that the blood of an innocent lamb or goat, a cow, maybe even a pigeon had to be shed on our behalf so that it would show God that we were serious about our for, uh, wanting to be forgiven and to enter into that relationship. So all of those were precursors to Christ coming and once and for all shedding his blood as the son of God who came into our world for that express purpose, just to be our Savior. Simply put, we couldn't save ourselves. If that we could have saved ourselves by our good works, we would have done that, and God would have provided a way for us to do it. Well, we couldn't, and we still can't. And a lot of people are just, I believe, really frustrated in the fact that they just can't figure out why they can't find that peace that comes from just knowing Christ and realizing we can't do it. And so th that's really the eternal message here that was with us all along and that is that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. We read it in the book of Leviticus in the Old Testament. And now we are here in uh, 2023. And it's the same thing. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. Well, thank God we don't have to shed the blood of an animal. We can now just rely on the shed blood of Jesus Christ who came and gave his life and shed his blood on the cross of Calvary for our sins so that as the perfect son of God, he could take our sins on himself and then he could forgive us for those sins. And in exchange for our sins, he gave us his righteousness. So what a transformation. It's just a great truth that we hang our hats on as Christians. And anything beyond that is not going to cut it because we can't work and be good enough for God. The book of James does talk a little bit about things that we can do. And as we uh, close off today and we get ready for looking at James 1 tomorrow on Tuesday, I just want to say this. Remember that when we are talking about our good works, they're not works intended to save us. They are works that we show God uh, uh, in our response to his goodness to us. In other words, God's been so good to us, we can't help but want to serve him and to obey him. And so that's really what it's all about. We're just serving the Lord. We're just sharing our faith with him. And we're, we're trying to be more and more like Christ and to grow deeper in our relationship with him. Well, friends, come back tomorrow as we look at James. I think you'll enjoy this study. We're going to go right on through James. It's five chapters. It'll take us a little bit. So don't forget to join us tomorrow for more fresh bread. Until then, God bless you. Have a great day.